Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Meet Praneet. In today's video, we are going to discuss some very important topics. And before I start those, let me thank all of you who have supported me in my EB1 consultation journey. And I'm very excited and very overwhelmed with the response I have got. And I'm trying my very best to help each one of you who is looking forward to start their EB1 journey. So if you have not, do check the link in the description. I'll also put it on the screen somewhere and uh, do check the website out. If you think uh, you want to pursue your EB1 journey, do uh, connect with me and I'll be very happy to help you. Now let's move on and discuss the topics that we have for today's video. Last week, I couldn't put a video up on, on YouTube because I was on vacation. So today we are going to discuss two topics. The first one is HR 1535. Now you might have already heard about this bill and this bill is termed as elimination of backlog backlogs at 2023. This was introduced by Mr. Pushan and Krishnamurti in the house on 20, May 10th, 2023. And a lot of things, a lot of important aspects have been covered in this bill. And uh, I wanted to show you, basically guide you through the bill and also show you in numbers, what is the number of green cards you're looking if this bill passes. Now, before even going into the numbers, let's see what happens when a bill is introduced to the Congress. So this bill was introduced on 10th March, 2023 by two senators. And now the process is that this bill will be discussed by the House. If the House passes, they will go to the Senate. If the Senate approves the bill, they will become a law. But let's say if the Senate is not happy with the bill, they might introduce some changes. It will go back to the House. Again, the same procedure will be repeated until it's uh, signed by both the House and the Senate. So coming to the chances, I don't think there is very high chance because it all depends on the priority of the government, what bills they have as a priority. Those will be definitely pushed before this term ends. But uh, if the government thinks that immigration is their priority, then probably there is a chance that this bill will also be introduced and will also be discussed uh, as others are. Now, but let's look into the numbers. Let's see if this bill is, has any importance to Indians who are facing a huge retrogression, right? In EB2, as you might have seen, the dates have retrogressed to 1st Jan 2011. That's a lot of retrogression because we have seen dates like 2014 at some point of time in 2022 oh sorry in 2020 and now it has moved back to 2011. now in let's discuss the numbers and let's see how what this bill proposes so hr 1535 proposes elimination of backlogs and how they're going to do this is by calculating numbers in two ways the first is they will take into account all the family-based green cards issued from 1992 till 2021 subtracted by any unused family-based green cards during this fiscal years. Then from this, they will reduce the number of green cards given to the employment-based category or people who are filing from employment-based during this fiscal year. So it seems very complicated, but let me explain you by numbers as I always do in other videos. So let's say each year, 226,000 green cards are given to family-based applicants. So if we take the, sub take the fiscal years, that is 1992 to 2021, that comes down to 29 years. So if we multiply 226,000 by 29, it comes to 6,554,000 green cards. So that is the number of green cards that was allotted to family-based green cards, family-based category, from the year 1992 to 2021. Now, they are the, uh, the bill proposes that will subtract the number of green cards which were unused in the family-based category. Now, if we look at this year, 50,000 green cards were added from the family-based, right? So if on average, we take 50,000 green cards which were unused each year from 1992 to 2021, that comes to 1,450,000 green cards. And if you subtract the number, that comes to 5,104,000 green cards. Now, the second part of the equation is the number of green cards issued to the employment-based category in this fiscal year. So on an average, each year, 140,000 green cards are associated or allotted to the employment-based. So if we take 140,000, multiply by 29, that number comes to 4,060,000 green cards. 
Now, if you subtract 4,060,000 green cards from the number we calculated just before, which is 5,104,000, that number comes to 1,044,000 green cards. So that means 1,044,000 green cards will be available for USCIS to use in the year 2024. Now, this is very important. Nothing will, is going to happen in year 2023. It will all apply to year 2024 and if only if this bill is passed. So let's assume that the bill is passed and the bill is of high priority for the government. Then what will happen is 1,044,000 green cards will be available for USCIS to remove the backlog or reduce the backlog in the employment based category. Now they have to use these numbers in a proportion. Over the years, it is not like that they will use all the green card in the first year. They will use it in proportion until they are all used. The other important thing is that there will be no country limit on the use of these green cards. And these will be given based on the, uh, the, the filing. So, for example, let's say if I file in 2011, I'll be the first one. And then 2012 one will come and then 2013 one will come. Right. So that is a very good thing because that will help people who have filed long back and who are still waiting. Now, it seems all very uh, promising, right? But I think it all depends on the chance of whether even HR 1535 looked at and is discussed in the House and the Senate. And if I would, I would wish that this happens and this is discussed and uh, government takes it seriously and takes it as priority because it's very evident that Employment-based green card category EB2 is not the way, uh, especially for Indians, because it's going to take a long, long time to cover that backlog. And each time when we look at the visa bulletin, USCIS definitely mentions that they, there's a huge demand of EB2 in India, even after the retrogression. So few key points before we switch this topic off and move to the next one, which is May visa bulletin. So stay tuned. Do, do watch the video till the very end because these two topics are very well connected. So the key takeaways from 1535 bill is that the USCI, the government is planning to introduce this bill. And if the bill is passed, then the bill is aiming to reduce the or eliminate the backlogs uh, for the employment based category. How they will do this is first they'll calculate the number of green cards available. How that is calculated? All the green cards is associated allotted to family-based category from the year 1992 to 2021, subtracted by the number of unused green cards in that category from the same fiscal years. That number roughly comes to, as I said, uh, 5 million and 4,000 green cards. Then from this number, we'll subtract the total number of green cards allotted to 100 employment-based categories from the year 1992 to 2021. And that roughly comes to 4 million 60,000 green cards. So the final number is around 1 million green cards available. So the hope is that this bill, passes, this bill passes and it helps in reducing the or eliminating the backlogs. But till then, don't keep your hopes high because I'm not sure where it falls on the government's priority list. But with that, let's go to the next topic, which is May Visa Bulletin. And there are very, very important takeaways from that value from that bulletin. So please stay tuned. Please watch the video to the very end. So now let's discuss the May visa bulletin. There's a bad news associated to it. So I'm not very enthusiastic uh, showing you the information that we got from the May visa bulletin, but to start with the family based category. So F1 is your unmarried sons and daughters of US citizens. F2A is spouses of green card residents. F2B is uh, spouse children of uh, green card resident. F Three is your married sons and daughters of your citizens and F4 is brothers and sisters of your citizens. Now, just quickly going through the category, it seems that there is a slight movement for F3 and F4, but nothing significant. Now, if we move to an employment based green card category, this is where the bad news is. So what we see is nothing changes for first employment based category EB1. There is a retrogression, further retrogression for EB2 rest of the world. From 1st July 2022, it has further retrogressed to 15th February 2022. EB3, bad news. Revo, rest of the world, which was current, retrogressed to 1st June 2022. A little bit of good news for uh, China because from 2018 November, uh, they have moved to April 2019. 
that's a little bit of movement but apart from that nothing majorly significantly changing for across the board the key takeaways is further retrogression in eb2 retrogression in eb3 what does that tell the other thing that uh, uh, that i wanted to say is this clearly means that eb2 has a lot of demand now if you look at the hierarchy right how this spillover works and i have explained this in the previous videos i'll put the link in the description do watch those videos to understand but generally speaking all the visas which are unused in eb4 and eb5 go to eb1 the eb1 spillover goes to eb2 the spillover from eb2 goes to eb3 what is happening is the demand may not be only high for eb3 india right now but it's very high for eb2 india and rest of the world that's why the pressure is being created and the dates are retrogressing other important key takeaway is the uscis clearly mentioned that there is high demand of eb1 in the rest of the world and that means the dates could further retrogress for india and china in the coming month very important point to note that means eb1 is going to further retrogress and this is your time this is your time if you if you think you have an eb2 eb3 filed you have a earlier date try for eb1 this is your time you should at least see where you stand if you don't qualify that's a different story but if you at least can compare and see where your profile stands what you can do in the coming years to get to eb1 that is very important we cannot really depend on bills like hr1535 we have to stand up and basically start doing something so that we can get on the green card category or green card uh, eb1 category as soon as possible and the other thing that usc has mentioned is there's a high demand of eb2 again there can be further retrogression in eb2 india next month so you can see it's already 21 2011 jan that means uscis is clearly saying that and let me let me read the text for you because i think that will kind of uh, help us go through and understand what's what they are saying so if i go through the text for the eb1 it says increased rest of the world demand and a number of use in eb1 will most likely necessitate retrogression in the final action dates for china and india in the coming months to hold the number of use further retrogression in employment base second preference for the rest of the world countries india and philippines that means that the numbers can retrogress further and because there is a high demand that that could basically uh, put more pressure on the on the eb2 india now uh, it it also says that uh, because there is a lot of demand it could be that it will be necessary to basically retrogress the indian employment uh, second preference and employment fifth preference as well now uh, apart from that it just talks about the visa availability in mex in the eb3 and eb4 uh, which or other categories which I, we have already discussed that the eb3 is also got retrogressed for eb4 for, for the rest of the world now to make it very simple for you eb1 is getting retrogressed there is a high demand in the rest of the world that means the spillover from eb1 will be likely very very minimum for eb2 eb2 already a lot of pressure in india a lot of pressure on the rest of the world i don't think you will see any movement for india at least for india china is seeing some movement uh, in eb3 which is a good news but the pressure is really really trickling down eb3 is getting retrogressed that means the any spillover which was going to go from eb2 is not going to go so that pressure would also increase so the outcome of may visa bulletin to summarize in few points is nothing significantly changes for family based a lot of changes for employment based a lot of pressure on eb2 india a lot of pressure on eb3 rest of the world and eb2 rest of the world there is going to increase a uh, number of demand or high demand in eb1 rest of the world that means the rate the dates for india and china will retrogress so do look out for these visa bulletins do look, look out for the videos and plan your strategy i am here to help you uh, so what we can do is start to learn about eb1 start to see other options start to see how we can basically free ourselves from this immigration bonds and with that i'll close the today's video and uh, i wish you a very happy weekend hope you all have a wonderful weekend we'll keep track of the coming visa bulletins and i'll keep making videos to make sure 
all the information gets to you in the right time, in the right stage, and without any nonsense. And that's the motto of the channel. So have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you in the next video very, very soon. Till then, take care and have a wonderful weekend.